This week on Your City Now, a report on DPD's protest response is out, and we pay tribute to a city council legend. Those stories are just ahead on Your City Now. Denver's Office of the Independent Monitor, the watchdog for Denver's police and sheriff departments, released the findings of one of the largest investigations in its history this week, detailing the Denver Police Department's response to the George Floyd demonstrations this past summer. Just some of the key findings in the report conclude that the Denver Police Department had no internal controls or clear policy on the use of less-than-lethal projectiles and use of force. There was no sufficient creation of rosters during the days of protests, and some officers' statements on the use of force were written two weeks late. The inability of the police department to produce body camera footage, forceful crowd dispersal without orders, lack of officer identification on riot gear, and the use of less lethal weapons that some officers were not certified to use. No guidance for use of high-risk explosive devices like rubber ball grenades and flashbang devices. And in light of no clear policy for those devices, the monitor's office recommended they should be banned. The report clearly called the DPD use of force extremely troubling, but still found some of the use of chemical and other weapons legitimate. Police Chief Paul Pazin, who welcomed the investigation, released a statement offering this. We want to learn from this and ensure that any of the gaps or the shortfalls don't occur in the future. We need to make sure that our responses are in line with our values as a city, and this is a step in that right direction. You can read the entire report at denvergov.org slash independent monitor. A recent survey by the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District revealed how dire the financial situation is for the majority of artists and art institutions across the state. That's why Denver Arts and Venues has partnered to launch the Arts Through It All Giving Campaign this season. The program asks residents to give a donation to a local arts organization, gift a membership, subscription or class, and shop local artists. In a typical holiday season, you would have the Nutcracker, you would have the Christmas Carol, Symphony would have multiple performances, and this year, unfortunately, we don't have any of those kinds of activities. And that's true not just at the arts complex, but really around the city. And so our cultural organizations are really hurting this holiday season, and so this is an opportunity to support them. And our goal is to really have an appeal for arts and culture so that People will think about giving back to the arts because they give us so much. Just making sure that when this pandemic is over, that, that they are still standing and surviving. Tis the season of giving, and Denver's police department has been collecting donations from the community to support families in need. So this year, the Denver Police Department um, was invited to partner with the uh, Denver Dream Center on, and collaborate on this Christmas in the City drive-through experience. The Dream Center has identified, I believe they said 8,000 families more impacted by, by COVID than others. Um, and this is the chance to, to help a little bit, to give a little bit of that Christmas spirit back um, and to make a kid's uh, Christmas. I just really want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, um, the Denver Police Foundation, um, AT&T, um, the Denver Dream Center. I mean, it's just amazing. This event will have 30 to 40 vendors who've all donated in some type of way. I know Macy's is donating um, hundreds of coats for kids. It's very exciting that we have the opportunity to be able to provide this type of experience for the community. In 1975, Kathy Reynolds became the first woman elected to Denver City Council, and Monday night, current council members honored her memory. It's clear that she loved the city of Denver and its residents. I learned so much from her. She was a role model. She was a mentor. And I learned that it was okay to be an assertive woman. For me, I will always feel this special appreciation for the doors that she opened. Reynolds served the longest continuous tenure in Denver Council history, spanning more than 28 years. Her husband, Rick, received the proclamation. Thank you so much for remembering her. I always will. Thank you. You can catch new episodes of Your City Now every Friday. Thanks for watching, Denver.